You know, from Essex here, it's a beautiful day outside today, and I would like nothing more than go for a walk with you. Uh, we're going to take a walk around a lot here today and continue to discuss kind of the state of the industry, especially when it comes to inventories and supply chains. Uh, this seems to be something that's going to be cropping up in the news with a lot of different industries and businesses right now. We are absolutely not immune to any of these changes. There are some surprising bright spots that are out there, but also some places that are really problematic for us as well. We go for a walk today and talk about those things. Essex, a helping hand with your land. This is the lower end here of our equipment lot, and we're going to kind of start our way here and work our way up as we go. Um, this is where we keep most of our used ag equipment, and you're going to notice as you look around down here, there's a lot of holes. Most of the times, kind of pre-COVID, this is a space that we never had enough room. You'd see machines stacked two and three deep sometimes. And if you look around down here, you're going to see some holes. Um, we're at a historic low inventory level right now across everything, be it new or used. doesn't really matter. We just don't have a whole lot of, of equipment right now. Um, as far as pricing goes, you're going to see that nice, desirable, good condition equipment creeping up in price. The market is bringing some really strong numbers. That's reflected in the trade-ins we can give you if you're looking to move into something else. Um, but used machinery right now is selling for good prices. Now, if you look at some of the things that, you know, start to get a little bit more rough, an old baler or something like that, there's still deals to be had out there on that kind of stuff. But inventories are low and supply and demand tells us that when that happens, you tend to see that pricing creep up a little bit and that has happened. We're coming up on an area down here that we call Skid Row. It's the row of all of our used skid loaders. Uh, probably the biggest congestion point right now in buying machinery is in construction equipment. Um, excavators, track loaders, that kind of stuff is where we're seeing our biggest backlogs. This is our used equipment lot for skid steers and you'll see, oh boy, what's down here? A dozen machines? Um, for us, even in the last two years, this is as much as 50 and 60 units down here. So. That inventory is down about 80%. So used values for construction equipment have crept up, particularly in excavators, um, and the availability of new is tight. Now that does vary by model. Some are better than others, um, but there's definitely spots where we might have back orders as many as 10 and 15 machines deep for a particular model before we're gonna get start, starting to get caught up. And that is gonna take a couple of months to start to normalize. Behind me is a bright spot. Um, it's not all doom and gloom out here when you walk around. You're going to notice that the pile of tractors here behind me is significant and I would say growing at this point. We're starting to have more and more tractor inventories arriving. While the tractors are looking really good, if you look beside me over here where the loaders sit, um, there's many, many fewer. Um, hydraulic cylinders, or specifically steel tubing, is a big problem in the industry right now. Supplies of steel tubing are very, very hard to come by, and that's impacting the production of things like roll bars and hydraulic cylinders. Anything that's going to have hydraulic cylinders on it is coming in very, very slowly. So loaders and backhoes specifically are not keeping up nearly with their pace of tractors. So while we're starting to get some crated tractors in, we would have about a 90% attached rate of loaders on those tractors and we don't have the implements in order to fit them up and get them out the door. So looking a little bit better. We've got some machines in the parking lots now that have some wheels on them, but the implements are really causing things to drag behind. On the subject of implements, things like buckets or a lot of kind of your dumb steel implements, box blades, uh, rear blades, rakes, that kind of stuff that are just basically a lot of metal are really creeping up in price. We're seeing steel surcharges now from some of these companies as much as 25% because the cost of raw steel has gotten so high. In the past, you used to be able to buy, say, a four by eight sheet of metal at $150, $160, and in cases now, now that same four by eight sheet could be as much as 600 bucks. So the price of that raw material has increased as much as four and 500% in some cases. And that is trickling down into the cost of these products now in steel surcharges. So things like these excavator buckets, if I were to go and order them today, I'm gonna to be paying about 25% more than what I would have about a year ago. Now our inventory you can see here is in pretty good shape. And we saw this spike in construction equipment. We started stocking up 
So I'm in pretty good shape with some right priced buckets. Hopefully we're gonna be able to ride that wave out and start buying again when that price comes back down and starts to normalize again. But today, if you need a custom bucket or something like that, it's gonna cost you a couple pennies more than what it did a year ago. Behind me here are a couple of zero turn mowers. Consumers buy with very different sales patterns than what our ag and construction markets do. It's interesting to see how there are different trends that happen depending on who the different buyers are. And there's clear divisions in the market that we can see in those different sales patterns. This year we had a fairly temperate and wet summer. As we've gotten into fall here, we've had some good growing conditions for grass. So we didn't really have a year this year where people's lawns really browned up and they stopped buying. Had a pretty good flow this year of zero turn mowers from all of our manufacturers going out and our inventories remain low. A lot of these companies aren't being particularly optimistic about what their inventory is gonna look like going into spring. So if you're thinking of a new mower for this coming mowing season, this is something that is good to think ahead on. Don't wait until your grass is starting to grow grow next season is something that would be good to jump in and get some orders in well above of that if you're going to be looking for a specific model. So there is a little bit of inventory out there on the ground, but I just we're hearing engine production problems and that kind of stuff from some of these companies. It's leading us to be a little concerned about what the inventory looks like going into spring. This may look like a big stack of pallet forks to you, but to me, it's a little concerning. This is only probably about two to three weeks worth of pallet forks for us, unfortunately. A lot of these things that come from castings that are generally made overseas. Um, a lot of your pallet forks are gonna be cast in China, shipped over here in a shipping container, are backed up by a lot of the same logistical challenges that you're gonna hear about from a lot of other companies, right? All of those shipping containers that can't get into the ports, well, they're filled with all of this kind of stuff, with the pallet forks and stuff that we're ordering for you. Um, they seem to come in in fits and spurts and our inventory levels spike to being pretty good and then we'll drop down the very, very little very quickly as everybody starts gravitating in here when they've heard we've got some pallet forks. Um, it's just moving all over the place. So yeah, unfortunately, uh, a lot of this stuff that has casting components and that kind of stuff in it, trickling in at a slow pace. Snow implements can really be a challenge in a normal year. Generally, snow equipment is built in the off season. They're gonna be building snow blowers and blades and that kind of stuff in the summertime. And then they're gonna stop production and then all those things are gonna go out for retail. It's generally difficult for us to get good snow restock orders in the middle of snow season, typically. If we have a big snow year, it's, it gets tight sometimes. Generally, all the, the downsides of this industry are frankly just being amplified right now, right? Because of all of these supply constraints and problems. Snow equipment is gonna be no different. Some of our vendors, we've gotten our preseason snow orders in and arrived and delivered. Some of our vendors still don't have our snow equipment here yet with no ETA on when it's going to arrive. So this is a year that if you're kind of that last minute person that waits till the snow hits the ground to come out and buy a piece of equipment, now's not the year for it, right? You wanna be planning ahead on this kind of stuff. I've got a video or two coming up here in the future talking about some three-point hitch snowblowers and stuff that we have coming. That we'd like to get your name on already. Um, actually seen some people taking walk behind snowblowers and stuff out of our showrooms already. Um, we've got some of our walk behind stuff out in the showroom and, and people are picking it up and thinking ahead this year. So those kinds of things are smart. If you're a pre-planner, this is the year for it pick that stuff up now. And it's also, if you think through that steel surcharge stuff that we were talking about earlier, a lot of this stuff would have been built months ago. And so it would have been built at a lower cost than what we might be looking at when we're coming into next year's snow season. It's impossible to have a crystal ball on that kind of stuff, but to look at any of this and think that it's going to be less expensive in the future, I certainly don't have that outlook right now. Episode of Crazy Neil's Deals here a couple of weeks, we walked around all these buckets talking about this topic of steel and pointing out the amount of inventory that we've accumulated for walk behind track loaders that are you know, right priced stuff before these 25% steel surcharges came out. If you look down this line of buckets here, you'll see all the red tags that are accumulating on these things as they're sold and paired up to machines that we're hopeful to get out here in the future. So a lot of this stuff is still out here and around. And again, these kind of today's standing inventory of buckets, the stuff that's made of steel is really gonna be impacted by these surcharges. 
It's become common practice now with a lot of our manufacturers to continue building equipment through parts shortages. So in a machine that might have 1,000, 1,500 parts in it, it really only takes one of those parts for them not to be able to deliver to us. The disc binds here behind me are an example of that. If you would have gone by New Holland's factory, you'd find a bunch of these machines sitting out in their parking lot waiting for gearboxes and stuff to come in. What we see though happen in the supply chain is that they'll have all these machines ready to go and as soon as that shipment of gearboxes arrives, we get a slug of inventory very, very quickly. So our back order for things like disc binds and that kind of stuff tends to go up and down, right? We'll be waiting on a couple of customers that would like to have a machine, but all of those orders will get filled in one foul swoop when that one part that we're waiting for seems to arrive. To my left over here is where we generally will line up all of our large self-propelled ag equipment, big combines, sprayers, forage harvesters, some of the most impressive equipment that you see out in the field. You see all the holes along here. Again, this is another area of used equipment where you'll tend to see a pretty long line of stuff up here. Any good serviceable equipment seems to be finding homes really, really quickly this year. We're in an economy right now where ag commodities and stuff are at one of the better places they've been for about the last 10 years or so. So anybody who's managing cash flows and needing to have money off the books by the year end is certainly looking to pick up this kind of stuff where they can get a meaningful piece of equipment at home and on their books in order to dispose of some of the income that they're gonna make during the year this year. Waiting to year end in order to make a lot of those purchases when they typically would happen is gonna be really dicey this year. There's just not the amount of machinery that's sitting out here on dealer lots for a snap year end purchase when your accountant tells you to. So thinking ahead this year on what's gonna be coming off the fields and looking at what's available here from us over the next two months or so is wise future planning. Behind me here is a New Holland Combine and a great example of preseason ordering. Historically, even pre-COVID, ordering this kind of stuff months or a year before you're going to need it was pretty typical. These are production lines that are very highly scheduled, uh, machines that aren't built in massive, massive quantities, right? They're only making a couple thousand combines a year. And that kind of equipment often is done as a pre-sell, right? Where you're gonna go and you're gonna commit to a particular configuration for a particular machine sometime in the future. That's becoming more the norm across a lot of this other product. If you're looking at something that's a little bit more of a specialty piece, be prepared to need to come in and do a pre-season order for it, where we're going to sit down and you know, work with the manufacturer in order to find out what that pricing and availability is going to look like when these things actually are built and they come to market. So becoming very, very common, even on machines like skid steers and excavators and that kind of stuff, that need for doing a pre-season buy or a, a retail order for a machine that is not on the lot today, just continues to filter down into smaller and smaller equipment all the time. So if you own an existing piece of equipment, one bright spot that I should point out to you here is that for all the difficulties that companies have had in making new equipment, I've been really surprised at how well the parts supplies for existing equipment have held up. For all those you know, people that are calling in and needing a, a washer or a gasket or a lot of these little things that you would think would have, you know, long supply chains into foreign countries and whatever. Um, this kind of stuff has held up surprisingly well. And I'm not gonna tell you that there's not a person or three out there that are waiting for something and are frustrated about it and can't get it. And it could be a little bit simply because of the amount of stocking and depth that we keep here on the shelf that has shielded some of you from a little bit of this. But I've been really surprised that I just haven't heard all that much from people that aren't able to get things repaired because of these supply problems. So if you think about it, you know, when you're making a new piece of equipment and the hundreds or thousands of parts that go into making that, it really only takes one to make things go sideways. But if we've got 99% of everything else on the shelf here that you're used to seeing, that kind of support system that we're known for is holding up remarkably well. So I'm really glad to be able to share that. Our last stop here on my little tour is an important point that you need to remember when you take this whole topic as a whole. Behind me here is our done lot. It's the stuff that's set up and is complete and ready to go out to customers and be picked up. Despite the headwinds here that are causing all these inventory problems, some of these rising costs and stuff with implements, we're still at a point that the industry is selling record amounts of stuff. We have sold more machinery in the last year than we ever have before and that momentum 
feels like it's continuing and it probably is gonna continue going here for a little while. So while we have all these headwinds and while we have all these inventory struggles, that bottom line number, the amount of machinery that's being delivered to you continues to increase. So while these lots look different, people are successfully buying tractors, they bought a lot of equipment. They're buying equipment at pricing, frankly, I'm surprised by. When we go through and we say these steel costs have gone up, our manufacturers largely have not backed off their promotional financing and discounting. A lot of that new machinery is still priced at what I would think is aggressive points for given all the supply problems that are out there today. Granted, it's my business here to sell you stuff. It is fundamentally why I make these videos, but heart to heart, I would not not buy a machine today because of what I'm seeing in the market. And I would look at today's market and look at things like steel surcharge, record levels of demand, you know, logistical problems, getting freight and stuff in that aren't likely to go away anytime soon. If you're looking at a piece of equipment in the near future, I would not think that waiting is gonna put you in a better place than where you're going to be today. We're gonna to continue to have a lot of these headwinds here for months and years to come. So keep that in mind. I don't wanna be a complete pessimist walking around here saying, oh, we don't got any of this. There's definite bright spots out here and the one bright Right spot is what you're buying from us day in and day out and how we're seeing that total number continually still ratchet up. So I continue to be a little encouraged when I walk around say this front parking lot here and see a little bit more equipment than what I would have seen weeks and months ago. By no means am I sitting here and saying that we're out of the woods or that we're seeing across the board improvement, but there are some bright spots that can be found out there. You're starting to see you know, tractors and stuff ratchet up a little bit. It really would be good to see some recovery in steel markets and steel availability. That would really help us start to turn the corner in a lot of ways. And I continue to really want to get home to fact that this should not be something that we look at is doom and gloom. Record numbers of customers continue to be served and we're still pulling that off and you know getting things done. So you know if you're looking for a piece of equipment come in have a conversation with a salesman we're glad to sit down with you and talk about what the future of these different markets may look like and if it's time to put down a deposit on a piece of equipment or if you might be a little bit better off waiting in the future if it's not something that you need today we will tell you that if that's the case. So if you're shopping for a piece of equipment and we can help or if you have parts or service needs for machines you've already got give us a call at message. We're available at 800-222-3373 or online at messics.com.